Okay, I guess my chaos of delight moment would have been, I think it, it has to be the landing day. I remember when we were, I think it was the first presentation of the first images that came down via Rosetta of the lander. So from the lander, the panoramic image from the surface of the comet. And I was stood next to, at the time, uh, Holger Serks, who was the, the, the lead scientist, the principal investigator of the camera on board Rosetta. And we were effectively hugging each other in tears when Jean-Pierre Biebring, the, the, the lead scientist of the camera on the lander, was presenting these first images from, from his instrument that show this alien world, this, this world that could be up to 4.6 billion years old or, or longer than that or older than that, superposed actually because the lander was on its side you could see this leg of the lander in the image and you're thinking that and, and John Pierre made this point here's something that's 20 years old and here's something that's 4.6 billion years old there's this alien landscape and we as humanity together on different nations put this thing together and sent it up and landed there and that's for me that moment where we were just in awe of the fact that what we had done uh, as a group of people that, that's something when I give presentations on the landing, you have the cartoon. I use the cartoon again as a, as a vehicle to demonstrate. And I, I say, this is accurate. And people think, oh, I'm joking. They have pieced together the part, the timeline. So you see the cartoon fillet moving away from Rosetta and then Rosetta takes its camera out and takes a photograph and Philae flicks back. That's what we did and we have got those images. You've got the blurred image as Philae was rotating slightly away from Rosetta and you see that. Then you see the sequence from Rosetta and that was actually another event on the day where we were just so happy that, that I have a picture in what we call the Principal Investigator Support Area which was a room just off from where the main control room where we had the, the main teams, uh, or the, the camera teams, the Shiva camera team, which is on the lander, and the Osiris camera team, get, just getting their data down and processing it to hand it off to say, here we go, these are the first images. And I've got a picture of Holger, who's just handed Emily Baldwin, who was the, one of the communications people, and she's actually the ESA Twitter, uh, one of the main uh, ESA Rosetta Twitter uh, people. So she was taking that, and we've got a picture of the memory stick, and that little picture is, that is the sequence of images of the descent. And so there is that connection again, that you're seeing those two characters saying goodbye. I have a very weird, I, the landing week for me is, is kind of like a black shrouded cloud at the moment. I can't recall it properly. It's a very strange psychological problem I may have that I just can't really perceive what happened that week. I do recall though that I went into it, and I think a number of us went into it, just saying, this is going to work, it, it can't go wrong. So you have this perception, and I always just talk about it as being a glass is half full. It was just, this has to work. And you go in with that mentality, which is what maybe that's, that's the stress levels you're talking about, that you're going in going, this is going to work, this is going to work. If it hadn't worked, I don't know what would have happened to me. It would have been, I would have had some mental break. I probably would have had to take a, a grinder and start scratching off the, the lander on my tattoo. But it really was that, that there was no chance that this wouldn't, wouldn't work. Even though there were, there were parts of the week where, well, before the landing, we actually had an event the night before where we realized that the gas thruster on top of the lander, which is one of the fundamental parts to try and stop the lander from bouncing, wasn't going to work. And we were sat there thinking, and going through procedures as to how we would go about landing still, even with, it, with this failure. And you're thinking, how, how are we going to do this now? Is this actually now not going to happen? And even at that point, you're thinking, no, this, is, this can't be it. This can't be the end of the story now. And it, it continues to this day that we are getting closer to the comet now. I do not believe that we have heard the last from the land. It can't be the end of the story. There's another episode or series of this, this soap opera that is Rosetta and Philae.